fourth and final section of the instrument. This is the choir division. And as you can see, we are back in another enclosed division with the walls and the roof. You'll notice uh, the same wall of shades. And so this, this section, just like the swell division on the exact opposite side of the organ, uh, has the ability to control the volume, regardless of what set of pipes you're playing. Uh, this is the softest uh, softest um, set of sounds in the instrument, corresponds to the bottom keyboard, and uh, it, it's used mostly for accompaniment as well as some uh, solo stops, the very soft accompaniment uh, uh, sounds. Uh, this set of pipes here is our big tuba. Now this is the single loudest set of pipes in the organ, so when you hear uh, a hymn tune being played uh, really powerfully that kind of soars out above the instrument, this is probably what you're hearing. Uh, you'll notice a set of uh, headphones there to help protect your ears. That's important while tuning, especially tuning these uh, very powerful stops. You see a little miniature bellows right here. Uh, this is used to help regulate wind pressure throughout the instrument, just to keep things even and steady, especially for, for high-powered stops like the tuba. And again, to point out other interesting uh, construction features, you'll notice that these larger tuba pipes are knuckled down at the bottom so that you can have the necessary length to produce the right sound without running out of any space or getting too close to anything in the organ. So as I mentioned while we were in the Great Division, you sometimes see these conical pipes that have the fabric band around them. Uh, with the tops with the cap on them and in this case we do have that chimney or that pipe that sticks out of the top So this is a literal chimney flute and that pipe uh, on top helps produce a slightly different tone than uh, The similar looking pipes that we saw in the great division You'll also notice some other pipes here that also have the red banding on them, uh, but they are conical on the top uh, So that might be called a copple flute or a spindle flute or something like that uh, various names in different languages that describe the same type of pipe construction, and that is, again, uh, its own unique type of sound. Uh, we also have another set of offset bass pipes here against the wall that are some of the low pipes for this division, and you can see how they are, again, angled, uh, and you can even perhaps see some of the supports that have been added to ensure that they, over time, uh, do not sag. So this is the, the power source for the instrument uh, with the wind. Uh, it provides all the wind for the entire instrument. You can see the big wind trunks over there. All of that uh, gets distributed both to the organ that's above us as well as being sent over under the chancel floor to the other side of the organ. Uh, so this is a big turbine in here uh, that spins and uh, then it pressurizes this reservoir which has springs on it, uh, and it's adjusted so that it keeps a constant pressure, and all the pipes have to be voiced or adjusted to speak on various pressures, and so all of that has to be very carefully measured and adjusted and balanced when the instrument is, is being built. So let me go run to the organ console and turn the organ on, and you can watch as this reservoir pressurizes and the organ comes to life. The organ is now up to speed and ready to play. The reservoir is full, 
Uh, the blower is up to its, its normal operating speed and the organist can sit down and make music.